gonna show you how I fill in this big hole left over from the old extraction farm and that brown one's now the new one so different shape quite a large hole really quite deep I'm gonna need a, a brick in this I'll also show you later on how to sort of patch around pipes with the render and fill in some small holes but first of all I wanna take off that plastic to make sure that the new satin cement that I build the brick in with and patch the render up with keys in and bites in really well and for that I definitely want to get this plastic out of the way do recommend you wear some goggles for this sort of work guys as the stuff's very brittle shooting out everywhere so now that I've got it sort of smashed up a bit I can just pull the rest out Preparation in every job guys, big or small, there's always some sort of preparation to be done. So, next thing is, this is render over old pebble dish, not something I would recommend, but just make sure that the edges here are all solid, and I'm going to have to clean them down and give them a bit of an SPR to seal them. So, not only did I give it a wee paint of SPR round, I uh, mixed a nice wee drop in with my sun cement mix. I do find that it sets the render off and the cement off a bit quicker, which will help me when I'm blocking this hole. As I'm just really here for the day, so sort of, you know, be a bit of frost proofing, guys, but also help just set off that that sun cement for the brick. And basically, the the neater you cut the brick. The layer of cement you have to put around the edge, the more chance you have of getting a good bite and getting the job done the same day. But again, I do recommend if you're going to do it, you know, especially DIY, build the brick in first, maybe let it set a day, maybe give it a bit of a sketch coat around and come back the next day and finish off. But if you do it right and you take your time and you have plenty of time that day, you can still get it done on the day. You can see how hardy the Ruby body mixer comes in for small jobs so back to the big large hole in the wall and just check and see what way the brick fits I was hoping to top it in that way but I'm gonna have to cut it in half to get it to fit in I was hoping to sort of just top it in and then break it but just make your measurement guys whatever it is the fits best and um, sometimes you get lucky if you've cored another hole out you can sort of just use that and re-cement it in but not for me today I have to cut my own brick and get it jammed in and the way I like to sort of fill these is hopefully it's tight so you can tap it in you don't want to be especially on a job like this where the render's you know over the top of old pebble ash you don't want to be going too mad or you know you could potentially loosen other bricks or stuff so but I do like to have it sort of tight enough so that it's pinched in even before the satin cement has been in round it and you can use some you know other bits and pieces to sort of help pack it out and basically I want it sitting so it's not going to move on me then I'm going to really point it in with with that super strong satin cement that I've just mixed and get it well pushed in around the edges so that you know, no moisture can get in and there's no chance of it ever moving. So, before I, I really go mad and point it all in, I'm just making sure I've got plenty of clearance and not out too far. So, I've still got room for my render to go on and be applied. And guys, obviously stick around here because all the important finishing parts are going to be at the end when I'm finishing up. And that's the areas I'm going to be really pointing in, making sure I've got plenty of cement in there. But yes, you don't want to be missing how I actually patch in the render as best I can. Again, outside stuff, patching can be very, very difficult to get it to look right. And I think I'm giving you some really good tips at the end, so definitely keep around for them. So this is how I'm going to get it well pushed in round, guys. Just a small tool. And I'm going to hold my hawk underneath. And what that'll do is, anything I do drop, it'll land back in the hawk and I can use it again. So... Also not making a mess. Um, again, I do have some sheets and stuff down, plastic sheets. So, it'll keep the ground and stuff pretty clean. 
as that is the main thing with Saturn's Moon. Especially if you do use SPR guys, that stuff would literally stick to plastic, steel and glass. It's so it's so strong. But like Scud Coat, again, if you have it in your Scud Coat, you know what I'm talking about. It really, really will bite in good. And you know, something if you do drop a big lump of it, get it scraped up and washed straight away if it's hit hit a bit of ground, you know, don't let it set in. As once it starts to set, it will start to stain as well. But you can see I'm taking my time with this guys and I do think this is very important. Again, I don't want to push the satin cement in too far, otherwise it'll be just falling down the cavity potentially. So just getting it in enough where it's well tucked in, in behind the, the brick here, the B-block, and you know, just making sure it's solid all the way around. Here's a lovely little um, close-up of it, guys, and you can see how well I've got it tucked in there. Um, no chance of this brick ever coming loose, even in an earthquake. <laughs> and again, just rub my hand over it, it's, everything's in, in behind. So, again, you might want to do it in two days, let that set up, maybe put a wee bit of a scratch on it, and come back, as obviously it's quite deep. But, in the meantime, I have a wee scratch on it, I'm going to let it pick up and I'm going to go ahead and do some snagging work on the inside also so, you know, if you have something else to do or a tea break to take um, you have to keep on working, you can actually have a break look at your phone for a half an hour or eat a sandwich or go up to the shop or something or have a cup of tea you don't have to keep working, you know, you don't have to keep on working guys I don't know what, how, how would a drip plaster ever come out looking like that, I do not know but yeah, you can see I'm just using a small tool in a bowl for this next big job I'm doing. So I'm really just snagging around sockets, a uh, couple of wee cracks and stuff, around spotlights and things. But yeah, it's kind of handy as well, so I'm not waiting for sand cement to pick up. I can go ahead and do something else while that sand cement's setting off on me. Um, taking the, the waiting game out of it, as I know... Some of you will also know if you try to put sand cement on too heavy in one go, chances are it may drop out. Even though that holds only like four inches by four inches, it could still, you know, sort of fish mouth at the top and drop out on you. You'd be back to square one. So yeah, just use your time wisely, guys. Maybe if you have to pace up jobs or go and look at another job, that may be a good time to go and do that. So here's the small holes to be filled guys, as promised, um, really small, sort of ones that you will get round the house typically, and something that size is perfect for vermin, not just letting water in, but vermin too guys, so I'll have you all keeping that house vermin tight and water tight at the same time, uh, coming into the winter, mm, definitely the time you're going to want to make sure have all these types of wee things done keeping that moisture out and keeping any wee intruders out and again the ones are pretty handy done practically done already you just again you want to make sure you have plenty of stuff in there and um, that pipe wasn't moving it was already cut by somebody else so able just to jam a bit of a brick in there and then we'll just fill it right in really tight tuck it in when you get some stuff in it guys it is important to press it in so you're getting some water in around the whole bit of brick that you've put in or stone whatever it is you know something in there just to, to help hold the the mortar again you could use expanding foam cut it back and make sure you've got yourself a nice bed of mortar to put in a bit of sand cement render here and um, again I would have rather take the pipes off if it was me rendering the job I'd have had that pipe off and just render around the, the one coming out similar to these you know it's a bit strange these ones have been drilled out after but again that is enough area to let rain in and enough area to let little creatures in so you know it also looks unfinished so it's, it's nice to be able to tidy all these jobs up and you can see how simple it can be 
even at this stage it looks so much better I think that you're closing out the black holes basically and getting it all all nicely filled in and so again make sure you clean up all the pipes after you do it guys but main thing is get it all in first get it taken up and you'll notice that I'm doing these before I tackle the bigger hole up top and really that's just to let the, the top hole of our ice scratched out. I'm trying to let that sand cement pick up. But just a quick look. You can see where the pipe was. It's the exact shape of the pipe. And it was obviously up there and it's been moved. Obviously the bathroom's changed around. So I'm going to tidy this up too. Um, the SBR will help me. And it's slightly off the, the line. You can somewhat see it there. You can see it better this way. You can see that it's slightly off, so we'll have to go from the high spot and bluff it in, blend it in a wee bit. Again, that's why I prefer to take the pipes off loose before I plaster. But it is what it is, and the repair here, while I'm doing repairs, may as well get it done. So we'll have everything on filled in. Just going to compact it in and float it up with the float. Sometimes you can get away with this is actually good enough and this finish will look nice. Now obviously this house has been rendered maybe about a year ago so it actually all looks pretty fresh and clean enough so I'm going to do my best. I want it to look as tidy and, and as uniform um, as if I haven't even been here patching as possible and that will, will take a bit more work like I said Pots and outside, exterior renders, pebble dash, dry dash, wet dash, it's all that bit harder, guys. Um, and render too. But using the Rafina sponge floats um, to get a really, really nice finish. Again, you can use a car sponge, guys, if you're doing DIY and you, you don't have the extra couple of quid to buy a sponge float. I do think sponge floats, for what I'm doing, coming in pretty handy and helping. Help them get that nice flush finish, um, you know. But again, it's it's what you have sometimes as well. But you can see that's coming in not too bad. It's obviously going to be a bit of a battle getting in between those two pipes, and that's something you're going to have to work with with like a wee point and trowel or a wee small tool. Those that small trowel I have is actually called a small tool. If you are looking them up, guys, they're called small tools, and they come in really really handy for patchwork. Unbelievably so, but yeah, you can see I'm really trying to get in that wee gap in between. As you know, it's important that we we'll have the hole filled, um, but don't have it looking too messy. But you know, we've got the hole filled, so rain can't get in, moisture can't get in, and vermin can't get in. But the next thing you're going for is looks, um, and that's why a wee bit of extra time. And you can see sometimes when you sponge it, you take some out. So that's why I'm just just taking my extra bit of time, make sure they're nicely filled and they're flush. Just you know that extra time really, really will set the job up to look so much better when it's finished, guys. And you can you can see that already now. That if you just pay more attention to the detail, that the job will look ten times better. And like I said, SBR in the mix, so this stuff does tend to want to stick to everything. So cleaning down the wall with the sponge, trying to blend in the, the, the new to the older as best as possible. But I'm also going to clean down these these pipes, guys, with nice, clean, fresh, cold water. And well, if you have warm water in the winter, it might not be so bad as well. But yeah, if there's any staining on the walls, we want to get that washed off because it you know, you might not be painting. Depends on what you're decorating as well, but these people, I don't think, have the idea of painting. So, get everything cleaned up as best as possible. So, back up to the large hole here. Um, it's actually a bit awkward because it's going to need to get ladders up to it. Um, sometimes you will find that, guys. You'll be up on ladders, filling in patches or extractor fan holes. Um, so just make sure when you are using ladders, you always set them up safe and correctly. Uh, don't be taking any silly risks. So that's my scratch coat 
that I was telling you about that I had on. I just need to put another wee thin coat layer on. And hope for the best. Sometimes when you are pushing the boundaries and you're trying to put too much on one day, it can end up a disaster. But my idea is always, when it's depth like this, I'll put it on like that and leave it all open so that the, the sand cement has a chance to actually dry up and let the air into it a little bit and it will finish much quicker here's a closer look and if it's time to rub guys you'll you'll see it getting crustier on the surface you can sort of feel it as well but yeah I always keep a wee, wee drop here just to fill in and again something like this you don't want to put too much pressure on it and let the float do do the job you can see it opening up a wee bit there and that's just the weight of the rain there and basically the moisture in it is making it heavier so if that does happen to you it's really important that to nip it in the bud and you can see i just nip some stuff into it and what you can do is actually nip it off and let it dry further this is me really pushing boundaries here and just trying to get something finished up as this is the last thing I can have to do, all the snagging work is actually done at this stage so once I do this and clean up I'm really away home so you see as well that I'm constantly rubbing it up the way and that's because I'm trying to defeat gravity basically and if you pull it down you'll help it fall with the gravity and now it's time to sponge float it and just sort of trying to wipe the edges clean with the wet sponge and again, I'm going to try and sponge it all up the way and really concentrate on the joints, guys, as well. This float did take it up nice and neat. Um, I'm going to keep working at this. Uh, it's a wee bit more at the top there. I'll just keep on filling. If you had to fill, float, float it again and then sponge it again, so be it. Just keep, keep working on it until you get it to the finish you want. I know this finish here. You know, most people would be over the moon with this. So, you know, if that's if that's sort of what you're after, you'll you'll get it. But if you sort of want to just get a bit more, you know, perfection on it, just keep on, keep going until you get it really, really nice, and then stop. Uh, a wise plaster once told me to know when to walk away. Um, sometimes, if you're going with depth, um, that is a good thing to know is when to stop and walk away. But if it is your own house and you're just doing a bit of DIY, then it's really you're 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 the boss, you're the master of it. And if you're happy, then it's time to walk away and, and let it go. Don't push the boundaries too much. Again, I'm gonna keep on playing this because I can't walk away for something. I tend to wanna do things as if it's my own house. I'll do it to to my standards and before I'll walk away. And that's why you'll see me poking away at this more. I'd rather spend another hour, two hours, trying to get something to to the precise look that I'm looking for. And this one here, it's just getting a wee bit of depth because obviously it's quite a bit of depth in one day. But it's not a big area, so it should, should get done. Um, my problem is as well, is it's quite a dark day, it's starting to rain as well. So that's not helping me dry things out here. But... Basically, guys, the float, the, the putting it on as neat as possible, and getting it straight, and then floating it to compact it in and, and help shape it as well. And then the sponge float, it really, really does get you the, the really good professional look, guys, at the end. And again, what I'm doing is well, really washing them edges with the, the dab float here. And you can see that it's taking it in every time I, I go back over this it gets closer to the thing and it's practically there so you know guys it's definitely something that's that's doable for most DIYers and um, it's not too scurry if it doesn't look nice you can always come with a hammer buster take it off and go again and um, a bag of cement isn't going to cost you too much um, and again just make sure you just wash up guys this is this bit all touched up pipes washed earlier you can see that they can go dusty with the sand cement guys so may may need to go over them again with a dump cloth before you leave and again some drips in the wall there i'm gonna wash away just before I leave and here we go guys all washed up further again 
another quick wipe. Again, you might need to wash them pipes a couple of times just to, to get it off. And it's really trying to open up here. The sky. It's not the best weather for outside work.